I think the whole scientific community have done a poor job on being more open about animal research. And I mean, there are reasons for that. Um, I mean, to begin with, people have been scared about animal rights extremism, uh, and that's fair enough. But actually, we needed to work together more because if you all stand up together and be counted, you know, they can't pick you off all one by one. So um, we have, in the UK, probably gone further than most countries in terms of getting more universities and pharmaceutical companies to start down that road of more openness. And it can usually start with what people feel safe things to do, like putting statements and information on their websites, photographs, inviting local MPs and politicians into their site. You can't just allow anyone around a, an animal research centre. You know, it doesn't work and there are, there are restrictions because the animals can't get infections. But we could do a lot more to show some people around. Um, so we have to make the effort. We have to start factoring that into what we do and how we operate, that there's got to be some openness now. I don't think people have had the explanation yet. I mean, that, and that is the problem about us not making the case. You know, for all these years, the anti-vivisection movement, the animal rights movement, have been out there saying it's not necessary, that all these alternatives and it's cruel and unnecessary. Um, well, that's actually not right. There are good reasons for it, and that's why it's conducted right across society in almost every walk of life, in major universities and public-funded research institutes and in international pharmaceutical companies, every Western government in the world, essentially every major research country in the world is going to be doing some animal research because it's so important. And the idea that we can just do without and it's unnecessary is frankly absurd. I think it would help if we were more transparent. I, I don't think we can get away from the fact that this is an emotional issue and people will have a very strong response to it in some cases. And so we can, we can respond with sort of logic and information, but I think we also have to show the emotional side of why we're doing it as well. We, we can't just meet emotion with logic. So um, we need to show the benefits to patients, uh, and that's some steps removed from animal experimentation itself. And then we need to be much more open about the process and what goes on, who does it, why we do it, and what's actually going on inside research centres. Yes, all of that stuff would definitely help. And it's one of the things I, you know, we get accused of, of being secretive, and it, it looks bad. I mean, people don't like that. People think we've got something to hide, and we haven't. What is really striking when most people go around a lab is they're, they're kind of shocked at how clean and tidy it all is, and actually there's not much to see because the vast majority of the animals are mice, and you go after room after room after room with mice in cages, and there's nothing to see. People are sort of expecting blood on the wall from those pictures, and they think that there are monkeys with you know, electrodes in their heads or whatever. And a lot of those pictures came from the Soviet Union in the 1960s. You know, they're, they're not, it's not how it's done now. So um, you know, we need to be getting out that information ourselves, and we need to be showing video of animal footage from, from the labs. Um, but again, you know, we mustn't pretend that there's nothing distressing going on. Yeah, animals are suffering for human benefit, and some people will find that distressing. It's difficult for us to say exactly what it is that would persuade the public that things are being done better. Um, I think what has made a big difference is the fact that people are being more open and coming out and showing that they are people themselves. They have families, they have pets. Um, and you know they're not scientists hiding, you know, in white lab coats, in doing things to animals that they're not prepared to talk about. Um, I'm I'm not convinced that the three R's as a as a concept is really getting through to the public. I don't suppose anybody would know what it means. I think we do have to explain to people some of the simple concepts within the three R's that, of course, we would use an alternative if we could, and that's replacement yes, we want to do the experiment in the best possible way, that's refinement, and reduce the numbers of animals. In many ways it's obvious, it's, it's good science, and so what we're trying to do increasingly is incorporate the three R's into everything we do and, and explain how we do it. But it's not necessarily a huge part of the message to the public. 
they want to know much more basic things. You know, are the animals well looked after? And the answer is, of, of course, because you're not going to get good results if you mistreat the animals. And is this done for a good reason? And again, our, our answer would be, it's for medical benefit. You can look it up and see on our website, for example.